The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. Whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Whistler. Rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast radio program. And remember that every traffic signal reminds you, with new signal gasoline, you do go farther than ever. Look for the familiar big yellow and black circle sign that identifies those popular signal service stations throughout the West from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, Quiet Sunday. This was going to be a quiet Sunday for Henry Parker. Peaceful, calm, restful. Away from the work and tedium of the office. Just the kind of Sunday Henry always looked forward to during the other hectic days of the week. And more than that, it was a special Sunday for Henry's wife, Ruth, was vacationing at their lodge at Lake Arrowhead and wouldn't be home. That was the best part. It was nice to wake up and not find Ruth there to nag and irritate him. And it was nice, too, to remember that tonight he had a date with Daphne. Daphne was tall and lovely. And Daphne seemed to understand that Henry liked to spend a nice, quiet evening. He was contemplating all this when the doorbell rang. Oh, never fails. The minute I get settled with the Sunday paper, if that bird Adams wants to borrow the lawnmower again, I'll... What? Daphne! Surprise, darling. Daphne, what in the world are you doing here? What will the neighbors think? I had to see you, Henry. I was all alone. Come in quickly. Daphne, darling, you know you shouldn't have come here. <laughs> Why are you so frightened, Henry? Your wife won't be back for another week. Don't you understand that... You don't seem very happy to see me, Henry. You know I'm glad to see you, dear. It's just that... Well, aren't you going to ask me to sit down? Oh, of course. Uh, this way, Daphne. No, no, not by the window. Over here. Why are you so nervous, Henry? That's it. Right, right here. <sighs> Thank you, Henry. There. Then when I look at home here... Oh, now, Daphne, you've simply got to understand it won't do to have you around the house here ever. Um, do you have a cigarette, darling? Cigarette? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, here. Match? Yes. <sighs> well, that's better. Now, go on, dear. Sit down. Put your feet up. Oh, please, Daphne, will you be reasonable? I'm being quite reasonable. Now, please sit down, Henry. I want to talk to you. <sighs> Very well, Daphne. Now, forget about your wife. She's at Arrowhead, a hundred miles away. Well, yes, but I... But what, Henry? Well, her friends are always dropping in. You know that. Why couldn't it have waited till tonight? I had to talk to you. Couldn't wait until then. Why? Is something wrong? That depends upon you, Henry. What do you mean? Do you love me? Oh, please don't be silly, dear. You know I do. I'm not so sure, Henry, and I'm very tired of it. The only time I get to see you is when you can get away from your wife. I've tried to explain. I want you all to myself, and... Well, if it can't be that way, I don't want you at all. That's why I came. I'm sick of meeting you in back alleys and dining with you in out-of-the-way places where no one will see us. If you really love me, you wouldn't treat me this way. I know, Daphne, I know. It, it isn't very fair. Of course it isn't. Can't we talk about it tonight? Yes, that's it. We'll have a nice, quiet dinner Henry, at the Willow. Henry, there isn't going to be any tonight. You've got to make a decision now. What was that? Hey, it's the garage door. Someone's out there. Could it be? No, no, it's it's not Ruth. Oh. 
So now stay. Daphne, we can't take a chance. You better go. I'm staying here. Maybe it's one of her friends. You'll start a lot of talk. I want an answer. Make up your mind. Oh, come on. Oh, listen, it's you, Daphne. Believe me. I, I promise you I'll free myself and move some way, but you just got to give time. Now, please, please go. All right, Henry. No, no, not the front door. Here. You, you, you better go down into the cellar. Uh, the door here. Now, you can wait down there at the foot of the stairs until I go. I'll call you. Remember what I said, Henry? Yes, dear. Of course, of course. <sighs> Henry? Henry, where are oh, you? It's Ruth. Henry! Oh, oh, there you are, Henry. Well, well, surprise. What are you doing here? You know very well what I'm doing here. I wrote you a letter two days ago asking you to join me at the lodge. But I wired you, Ruth. I told you I couldn't take the weekend off. I'm way behind at the office. I don't think I feel up there all by oh. myself now. Leona and Emily and Edith, all of them up there with their husbands, and I'm alone. They all want to know where you are. I know, Look, I explained. I feel but... like a fool. Well, I, I... Henry Parker, you're going back to Lake Arrowhead with me this very afternoon. I've had enough of your excuses. But I can't. Don't you see I ask I... so little of you, Henry. I ask only what a wife expects, no more. You've got to go back to the lake with me today. And why, may I ask? Henry, today is our 10th anniversary. I told everyone you'd be there tonight. They'll think it's strange if you aren't. I'm sick of this pretense, Ruth. I'm fed up to the neck with all of your friends. Furthermore, I don't care a hang what they think. Why don't you tell them, Ruth? Why don't you tell them I want a divorce? You're not going to humiliate me. They're all coming over tonight, and you're going to be there. I won't be a laughingstock, Henry. Is that clear? Yes, that's very clear. No one knows I'm here in town. They think I'm still at the lodge. They all went on a picnic to Big Bear today, and I told them I had a headache. Oh, Henry, they won't be back till tonight, and when they arrive, I want you to be there. That's clever of you. Why did you do all this? I'd die if they knew I had to drive into town and beg you to come back with me. And what about the neighbors here? Well, I, I took all the back roads, and when I reached our street, I came up the alley and drove into the garage. Oh, please understand, Henry. This means everything to me. I, I couldn't face them. You and your pride. Oh, please, Henry. It's only three o'clock. We can drive there in three hours. There's plenty of time. I told everyone to drop in from, from nine on. You simply don't understand, Ruth. I'm not going. I don't care what your friends think. Don't you see that? You're coming with me, Henry. That's all there is to it. Now where are you going? Down in the cellar to get your overnight bed. No, wait a minute, Ruth. No, wait, wait. Oh, don't argue with me. Go and get your razor and things from the bathroom. All right, Ruth. All right, you win. I'll go down and get the suitcase. I can get it. Stay away from the door. Henry, who is that woman? I told you not to open that door, Henry. you... Henry, what are you doing? You overbearing, stupid. Henry, Henry, don't be silly. Don't be silly. No, no you don't. Me. I've had all of you. I intend to kill Ruth. Oh, no. Oh, Ruth. Daphne. Say, we'd better get some water here. Let me... What's, what's the matter, Daphne? Daphne, why? What's the matter? Well, don't you see we'd better... Well, she's... Well, don't you think that... We, Just we, let her stay there, darling. We, There's no point in moving her now. Oh, no. You mean... You mean Ruth is... Yes, Henry. She's dead. With the prologue of Quiet Sunday, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange tale by The Whistler. My merry Oldsmobile. <laughs> Remember those good old days when horseless carriages roared down bumpy streets at the furious speed of 25 miles per hour? Automobiles have changed a lot since then. And so have their requirements for gasoline and lubrication. In fact, outstanding authorities, including the United States Army and Navy, agree today's high-speed precision-engineered motors need better lubrication than straight motor oil alone could ever provide. That's why Signal now brings you an amazing new type lubricant, Signal Premium Motor Oil, combining finest 100% pure paraffin base with five scientific new compounds, each developed to do a job which straight oil alone can't do. 
The result? Exhaustive tests prove new Signal Premium Motor Oil actually keeps motor six times cleaner and reduces cylinder wear one-third. Yes, the oil you use can make a big difference in the way your motor runs when it's Signal Premium Motor Oil. So, go modern. Join the thousands who are switching from old-fashioned straight oil to Signal's new lubricant that guarantees you a sweeter running motor. New Signal Premium Motor Oil. And now, back to the Whistler. dead at the foot of the cellar stairs. And the quiet part of the Sunday is over, isn't it, Henry? Just like that. Her unexpected arrival home, her irritating insistence that you go back to Lake Arrowhead with her, the argument, the cellar stairs, a flash of blinding rage, and it was over. Death is a strange, terrifying thing, isn't it, Henry? You've never been so close to it before. All you can do is stand there at the foot of the stairs and look dumbly at Daphne, too stunned even to think. Uh, Daphne, I didn't mean it. It was an accident. You you saw it all, didn't you? There was nothing. She just slipped. Stop it, Henry. You saw it. And you can tell them about it. I said stop it. I'm not going to tell them anything. What do you mean? We've got it. Forget it. You pushed her and you know it. You mean you're going to tell them? Oh, Daphne, you can't... uh... But don't you see it? Listen, Tony. There's a way to get out of this gracefully. Now, get hold of yourself. I could hear her through the door. What did she say about sneaking away from the lake? Oh, uh, it was our anniversary, and uh, she she wanted me to be there. Her uh, her friends are away at Big Bear, and they think she's still there at the lodge. And no one knows she came down here? No. She wasn't seen? No. Henry... Supposing she fell down the stairs at the lodge instead of here. Huh? While you were spending a quiet Sunday in town. I... I don't know how she could... Now, wait a minute. Let me think. Um, There's a long staircase up there. I remember it. What if her friends came back from Big Bear at 9 o'clock and found her at the foot of the stairs when everyone knows you're here in town? Well, I... Yeah, but... Well, uh... How, how could we get her up there? Well, we've got to try. It's the only way. Well, look, I'll take her car up to the lodge. It's got to be found there. I can get to Arrowhead without being seen. I know it. And then I'll come back with you. Well, uh, what about Ruth? You've got to take her up in the trunk of your car. And there's only one thing more. Somebody's got to know you've been in town all day. Oh. That's right. Yeah, an alibi, huh? Of course. Where could you be for the next few hours? Oh, I don't know, Daphne. I, I don't know how I... Uh... A, a movie. What about a movie? movie? Yes, that's it. Uh, pick one that you've seen. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, wait, wait a minute. Oh, and and uh, there, there's Charlie Hardcastle. He, he goes to the committee meeting at the church early every Sunday. Oh, yeah. I, I, I could pick him up and I'll tell him I'm going to the movies. Huh? Of course. Buy a ticket, go in, and then sneak out the side entrance. Yeah. It'll be dark when we get to the lake, and I'll meet you at at the Y in the road just before the, the uh, before you get to the lodge. Yes. I'll honk my horn twice. Do you understand? Oh, yes, I understand. We haven't much time. Come on, we've got to get her up to the car. Oh. We'll get that blanket over there, and we'll wrap her in that. Oh, this works. All right. Uh, Hurry, Henry. All right. Here you are. Just throw it over. Okay. Are you, are you ready? Yes, all right. All right. Yeah. Oh. All right, we'll go right up the stairs. Oh. Oh, what's that? I don't know. Something crashed through the window. Oh, quick, back under the stairs. Yes, sorry. Now, get down. What was it? I don't know. Wait a minute. There it is. It's a baseball. Those fool kids next door playing baseball on the big floor. They'll be coming after it. Go out and give it to them before they try to come down. All right, all right. I'll crawl down and get it. Gee, I can't see down here. Wife old sourpuss Parker is... Oh, hello, Mr. Parker. Hello, Freddy. Gee whiz, we're sorry about the wind. Oh, that's all right, Freddy. Here, let me hand the ball to you. Well, you can't reach, Mr. Parker. I'll come around and get it. No, 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 you stay right out there. I'll... 
Here. See? You can't reach up this far. I'll be down in a sec. No, you, you stay right there, I said. Oh, gee whiz, I only... Now, now, let me throw it up to you. Look out, Mr. Parker. You'll bust the other window. There you are. See? Oh, go on now. Never mind the window. Go on with your game. We'll divvy up the first one, Mr. Parker. But the Look, I said one... never mind, Freddy. Go on, get out of here and close that window after you, will you? Okay, Mr. Parker. Gee whiz, what's the matter with him? <sighs> Well, that was close. Well, don't worry about that now. Let's get her into the car. Just a quiet Sunday afternoon, Henry. Nothing to mar its peaceful stillness. Except the small matter of getting the body of your wife, Ruth, up to Lake Arrowhead. Leaving it at the foot of the stairs at your lodge. Parking her car where she always leaves it. And returning with Daphne to Los Angeles. Oh, without being seen. And, uh, oh, yes, there's the matter, too, of Mr. Charles Hardcastle and the alibi. Henry, you've got to get hold of yourself. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe Hardcastle's left already. You're shaking like a leaf. Quiet, here he is. Hello, uh, Charlie? This is, uh, Henry Parker, Charlie. Yeah, I'm fine. Well, um, look, I was going to a show tonight, and, uh, I wondered if you'd like to join me. Oh, you're going to a committee meeting at the church. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Well, how about letting me drop you off? It's right near the theater. Well, good. Well, I'll pick you up in a few minutes. Huh? Oh, no. Forget it, Charlie. I'm glad to do it. All right. Goodbye. What's that? Charlie will swear to the high heavens I stayed in town. What time is it? Uh, uh five o'clock. You've only got an hour to spare. It'll take three hours to drive up there. Remember... I'll be waiting for you at the Y in the road. All right, Daphne. At the Y in the road. There's no turning back now, is there, Henry? The body is riding behind you now in the trunk of the car as you drive slowly down the street to pick up Charlie Hardcastle. You're beginning to settle down a little, aren't you? The terrible shock that gripped you at first is beginning to wear off, and you're thinking more clearly. Some of Daphne's quick, cool courage was there for you to borrow when you needed it most, when the panic made your knees weak, when you could think of nothing else except running blindly away to hide somewhere. At ten past five, you stop by for Charlie and nonchalantly begin to build your alibi as the two of you drive toward the church. Oh, oh don't be silly, Charlie. It's no trouble at all driving around this way. Uh, nothing else to do, you know, just taking in a show. Hey, you kind of surprised me, Henry, calling up that way. Oh, did I? Yeah, it's been a coon's age since we've been out together. Now, uh, by the way, where's Ruth? Uh, oh, been up to the lake for a little rest. <laughs> How I envy you that large. I'd like to get away sometime myself, you know. Well, I'll tell you what, Charlie, as soon as Ruth gets back, why don't you and Sadie go up to the lake? You're welcome to use our lot. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Henry. I'm sure Sadie will be thrilled to pieces. Oh, not at all. You've no idea what a great help you've been to me. Why, many times... What's that? I better pull over. You got a flat, I'm afraid. Flat? Oh, no, it can't be. It just can't. Well, take it easy, Henry. It's just a flat. No, listen, I'll tell you. I'll run on the rim. I don't care about the tire. I haven't got time Wait anyway. Wait a minute. I... Don't be silly, Henry. You don't want to go around ruining a perfectly good tire these days. Let's have a look at it. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, the casing's okay. You're lucky. Now, look, Charlie, it's only a few blocks to the church. You better run along. I'll fix it. You're all talking to the best tire changer in the business. Come on, where are the two? No, come on. Go ahead, please, Charlie. What's the matter with you, Henry? Oh, I just don't want you to be late. It'll only take me a minute. I wouldn't think of it. I'll get the keys out of the dash. Uh, tools are in the trunk, aren't they? We'll get her fixed. Uh, no, wait a minute. Wait, wait Charlie. I'll, I'll get the keys. Already got them. Here, give them to me. Take it easy. I don't mind a bit. I'll get the spare out of the trunk. No, let, let me do it, I tell you. Something eating you, Henry. Oh, I'd just rather do it myself. You sure got the jitters. Huh. Well... Don't you see, Charlie? I just don't want to see you get all messed up and dirty before church. Say, look, why don't you go up the street and slow the traffic down? Have them swing around me. I'm not too close to the curb, and the street's kind of narrow. Okay, Henry, if you say so. Here are the keys. Well, 
It's worse than ever now, Henry. Worse even than the moment when you look down at Ruth, lying still at the foot of the cellar stairs. One more second and Charlie would have opened the trunk, looked curiously at the blanket-wrapped, shapeless thing that was your wife, and it would have been all over. But you can't waste time thinking about that now. Your hands won't work. You fumble clumsily with a jack, with the lug nuts on the wheel, glance nervously at Charlie down at the corner directing traffic. A thousand years later, the tire has changed. And you're frantically trying to get the old wheel back in the trunk oh, when... Come on. Yeah, let me get in here with that, Henry. No, 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 no. I, I, here, I, I, I'll take no, it. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, that's good. All set? Yeah, yeah. You can go ahead and get in. We're... Uh, hey, hey, you left the jack out. Yeah, let me put it in the trunk. No, 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 no. It's all locked. I'll, I'll throw it in the back seat. All right, Henry. Well, better get in. Yeah. Well, I got the keys right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of a tough break, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Charlie, uh... Hmm? <laughs> I'm sorry I got so jumpy. Funny thing, though, flat tires always kind of throw me a little. Yeah, I don't think I was much of a help, though, standing out there. You're soaked to the skin. Yeah, I am. Well, you see... Never would have done to have you show up at church this way. Uh, oh, gosh, it's too bad you can't go to the show with me. Hey, you know, I, I was thinking, uh, maybe I won't go to church. I wouldn't mind seeing a movie tonight myself. Oh, oh now, I don't want to talk you out of going to church. Oh, don't get me wrong, John. Oh, no, it was... Uh, I can thought. let you off right at the door. <laughs> uh, what's playing at the show tonight? Oh, I don't know, some second-rate picture. I'll tell you, I'll give you a report on it, and you can take it in tomorrow night if it's any good. <laughs> I'd hate to think I kept you out of church. All right, Henry. Don't worry. I'm going to church. <laughs> Next, please. How many? Uh, could you tell me if the main feature's on, please? Starts in about six minutes. Oh, good. I always hate to come in during the middle of a picture. How many, please? Uh, just one. Fifty-five, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have change. Uh, can you break a twenty? I've done it before. Let me try, huh? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, uh, here you are. Two, three, four, five, ten, and twenty. Thank you. Thank you. Awfully hot tonight, isn't it? You can say that again. Next, please. Yeah, too warm to suit me. Earthquake weather, that's what I call it. Say, buddy, if you yes, don't sir. mind, oh, I... Oh, oh, pardon me, of course. Uh, good night, miss. Let me get that guy. What a character. I'll see him in my sleep. That's right, Henry. They'll remember you now. A minute later, you're lost in the comfortable blackness of the theater at an aisle seat near the side exit. You sit there for a moment and then slip out unseen and hurry back to your car. It's six o'clock now, Henry. Just three hours left to make it. Sunday night. The traffic is coming the other way now, back into Los Angeles. Fifty. Fifty-five. Sixty miles an hour. And always you're careful to watch the rearview mirror. Would never do to be picked up for speeding, would it? Oh, 8.30. I make wonderful time. And there's the Y in the road ahead. Brother, it's dark. Where is she? Where is she? Oh, yeah. Oh, Daphne, thank heaven. You made it, darling. Is everything all right? I think so. Did anyone see you? No, I was awfully careful. You better go ahead. I'll follow you. Have you been up to the lodge? No, hurry. Go on ahead. We haven't time to talk. Okay. There's the lodge. Look, pitch dark. 
Where does she usually leave the car? Over there at the side. Better move it now. No, no, we'll take her in first. You got the keys? Yeah, right here. All right, hurry and open the trunk. I'll help the carrier. Yeah. <laughs> We're in time, darling. We made it. <laughs> Oh, you made it, Henry. The lodge is deserted, and there'll be plenty of time for you and Daphne to arrange Ruth's accidental fall at the foot of the steep staircase. Leave quietly, lock the door, and sneak back down the dark road to the highway. It's simple, isn't it? Your alibi will hold your sure of it. Yes, Henry, you're safe now. And strangely, the horror that gripped you when you first looked down on Ruth's body is gone. As the two of you carry it up the stairs to the front door of the lodge. Where's the key? I've got it right here. Just a minute. Oh, where's that darn keyhole? I better get a match. No, no, wait a minute. Here you are. Oh, good. That's got it. All right, I'll go in first. Easy, Tom. Not so fast. Okay. All right, follow me. I know my way in the dark. Where are the stairs? Over this way. Henry! Who turned on the lights? Surprise! What? Surprise, Henry! Surprise! Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. Featured in tonight's cast were Joseph Kearns and Mary Lansing. This program produced by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Bernard Girard and Zane Mann. Music by Wilbur Hatch is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service.